Hello everyone, I watched Guns of the Galaxy 3 on the set. I must say it was enjoyable, however, doesn't mean it was all that. Uh, as a trilogy, uh, there were some issues for some of the characters and how James Gunn shows certain routes and interactions for the characters in an unusual and non consistent interaction and clean. More. However, I want to point out that it's not all bad. I really did enjoy this film. After she died, I had fairly war Peter to come at, at Thanos because those two knew each other, they loved each other, and yes, they annoyed each other in a playful way in Guardians of the Galaxy in the first one because that's how they had to be introduced in that way in James's point of view. It worked out for both of them in the end, and they ended up being. Better do together and the relationship with God's stronger, especially in the second film. And we see those two become such a squad girl and lovely couple who cares about each other in the Infinity War film. So in the end game, when Peter was brought back from Snap, we, end, we see him look at her when he was in the field fighting the Thanos' army. She had no clue who he was when he hit him. It seemed that there were it was a little bit possibility that she did because maybe Nebula told Gamora who he was off screen about also having a relationship with quote him, meaning Peter. It was surprising that that game when they made it like she left and went to space perhaps to avoid the occurrence of the galaxy team she would drive to find herself and go other places where space see maybe what she missed but it, it seemed that in this film, she became a little unsure of how she feels of being in a new timeline, and maybe that was something that she probably wasn't really deal with at all, because there's no way for her to get back. And so, throughout this film, but seeing this film, she became annoyed at a point where she didn't care to listen what Peter had to say about their past and it seemed that it, as if it was a uh, different type of Gamora that we never saw before and she went to the, which is I think that's the point of this this character but not in a way that we thought it would be she went to the revolutionaries even though she hated the idea of them wanting to hold on to the power stone and not turning on no call which didn't happen for her and we talked about her within the timeline, however, it would make sense someone within the Welshers would tell Gamora what their plan was of the orb, especially that Yondu's not alive anymore, they would have told her Yondu's plans for the orb when in the end of the first film, when Peter gave him the orb, so Yondu thought she would have understood where she stand on her right around within the stones. She wasn't the same Gamora, we all know, she doesn't say because it with who we know from the first film this takes place in the summer of 2026 because in the holiday special it takes place in 2025. I told some people I would mention the MCU timeline on like she had a catch up to do which she doesn't even try to do. As if the more we knew never existed and that's really upsetting to me. She became more mad at Nebula, even though we saw those two care for each other in the end of end game, and it seems that in the end game journey she went through, it's that she never cared about that, it's as if it didn't matter. And her sisters too, Gamora saw the 2023 Nebula killed a 2014 variant of her because. In the end of Endgame, Nebula became remarkable and then ever she advanced to self characterize and going forward in the MCU. And side note, it's weird how they treated her Gamora in this film. If they didn't go this route with the way they did with her, she probably wouldn't have been so inconsistent. Not sure why James Gunn wanted her to be this certain way in the film. It was a place for her. I really wasn't interested in learning more about her. She obviously didn't 
herself. Nebula also became annoyed with Gamora and her actions. However, I do appreciate that at least one of those two, aka Nebula, at least gave Peter the time of the day and care within the film to hear him out. All this must have made Nebula frustrated with the pressure within the mission to save Rocket and which made her, her yell at Mattress and threats when she didn't really need to. She has care for Peter and Rocket. However, Clown with threats and Mattress, which is a little out of character for Nebula when it comes to her character arc. I love her in Endgame and she seemed cool in the holiday special and I'm not sure what happened there but her personality changed out of nowhere and speaking of nowhere the empty floating celestial head in space that basically got a bit rebranded within the holiday special became the headquarters for the Guardians which I really love so much Kraylin didn't really get enough screen time however I understand that he had to follow Peter's orders to say put in case he needed him to operate the ship which he actually had to and also on side note probably the actor usually would be the standing for rocket so it made sense that he probably wouldn't have to he would have to do that behind the scenes so it made sense that didn't have him in the film that much him being in, in the film really, it's really awesome I surely love how he wants to honor Yondu and by Learn how you used the arrow in what he used to. I love that uh, floating celestial head can go through space. I find that really impressive on how the Guardians pull that off of the resources they had. Probably they probably had like grab some other massive parts from other places throughout the galaxy. So they probably plus they have been on in space for they've been a Guardian for like a while, a lot of hours. So they. It makes sense they would eventually find a way to adjust and upgrade the celestial head in that way. Okay, it's time to talk about Rocket. I thought he was going to die to give a back story about him and the villain high visionary is writing on him and other animals within the galaxy was so harsh and so important to this film, which was interesting since those animals were also based on Earth, including the rocket. Not many animals from the other parts of the galaxy. However, did we know of? Higher vision that we made rocket very intelligent, and he didn't even mean to, by the way. So he was also impressed on the IQ level rocket had. And rocket made friends, and they died when, when he was fighting higher vision that we which is really good reason to watch it all happen. Rocket's friends really enjoy power to see. They really care about Rocket. For all of it they have, even though they have their own personal things they each dealt with with the villain in this film and it really shows how much of an impact Rocket has on everyone he's around. And Warlock was in this film and he nearly took the life out of Rocket. The way Adam was done was it was okay, I feel like they could have done better. Let me explain. The Guardians of the Galaxy had to save Rocket because of M. Warlock attacking them in their own headquarters. And by the way, Adam didn't do much other than start the plot of the story. He made out because his mission was to destroy the Guardians of the Galaxy according to Aisha and he fought them so hard and basically almost killed Rocket. Which was that the other members of the Guardians defined ways to save him with the limited time they had and they were exhausted and also Peter was and feeling him feeling well towards the beginning and it was like a lot of things going on with them already. And if Adam would get more involved and becoming more of an obstacle and finding ways to prevent the Guardians from saving the market aka making the team one at a time, you would have been more important to the film. You would have dropped in the plot a little bit better as well and they would have gave the Guardians a dead end scenario where there is a possibility where they would have failed. Imagine if his actions caused the Guardians to make a difficult decision to let Arcade live or die. The no action would have changed the entire idea of the film and uh, they would 
basically complete his mission on quote destroying the coins of the galaxy which is what I just said in the second the editing of the second film I really love Star Lord I honestly saw him take good charge in the missions that he would need to do however Gamora was actually the obstacle within his way and side note there's no doubt that she understands the situation that the Guardians of Upper Guns of the limited time they had to save Rocket they had to make a do with what they got and they in this film they to make her care for Rocket and Sub and there was a point where she was a little annoyed with Peter with, and what he was doing with the team basically it felt like Peter was doing one part of the mission his way and Gamora wanted to do things on her way and it turns out sometimes it kind of went both ways but I feel like Peter's way actually worked a little bit better with finding that information on how Rocket was experimented on. I love Drax and Mantis, they brought the fun in this film until Gamora's attitude basically rubbed off on Nebula a little bit which became those two against those two meaning Nebula and Gamora were basically were teaming up and not teaming up but they were gaining up on Drax and Mantis however it didn't feel like that with Nebula towards the end because she was really busy with the mission and she was with Dreads and Mantis heading to the ship in Counter Earth to save Peter even though he wasn't there. Didn't like it about Mantis was the way she was thinking about her powers. She didn't want to mess with Peter's feelings so towards Gamora because she wants him to think about going home and seeing his grandpa and Peter was really against that and then and the way Peter felt about Gamora, I feel like Mantis didn't really want to interfere with that. However, she's messing with Jess's feelings just for laughs and that doesn't really sound like her character that much. She was a little odd in that way. Not sure why she treated one character differently from the other when it comes to wanting or not wanting to use her powers. I don't believe it's because she learned that Peter was her half brother. I feel like that's been, I feel like that's about the idea of Peter and wanting to love Gomorrah or her wanting to have Peter to reunite with his other family from Earth. I believe Mattis became inconsistent with her stance when it comes to her powers because maybe James Gunn wanted her character to be that way and maybe change her to make certain decisions about her powers. However, it didn't feel like it, to me it didn't feel like it worked and just because it just made her decisions of her powers a little bit more confusing. Well, I just want to know how you think about that down below. So why have Mattis the only character that had no problem progressing her character throughout her um, MCU journey to make her a really lovable character just that they did with the Holly special and then ended up having her be a little bit odd and somewhat have a queer go with one character and another. However, I do believe that she met well. By the way, Counter Earth is actually visually nice, meaning the idea of it just didn't make sense to me. I put Amos living there in a uh, late, to, late 70s to 90s um, era vibe. Actually, it worked really well. And Especially for Peter who shot that too in bed later in the video. Nebula <laughs> trying to open the car door was hilarious. It was so simple and, and really complicated for her at the same time. Which is really hilarious. High vision never took our entire planet. Maybe people who talk about this film understand how evil High vision is and came throughout the film. However, the Guardians doesn't mention this um, particular part later in the film. He destroyed the entire civilization and Thanos and Kane did certain things, but um, this made this film made those two look weak by comparison. If we're comparing the villains here, which isn't I normally do, however, it is important to understand that the Guardians see 
feelings in a different way. And I, I felt like High Visionary was much brutal with the other stuff that he's done. High Evolutionary caused so much demolishment and havoc towards the living. High Birds have been going to Earth, causing actual deaths. I mean, this film and the Guns of Galaxy were actually more focused on saving Rocket and then they ended up finding the children and the animals in cages, which they were mostly focus on so they didn't really think about the other citizens in that planet if there was more not that we saw more but they, still we, we never know anymore I love Drax so much in this film the way his family is gone and him being there to save Rocket was really done like I said with matters you use him for labs shouldn't really go unnoticed and with the way he he got played with by his emotions because of her. In other words, I want to continue with talking about the fact that he brought the audience laughing and enjoyable. Stress being the one character who didn't talk and communicate with the children and making them laugh was truly heartwarming and him thinking about his daughter and was it memorable he was talking to how he loved her in that way, loved her as a father, and I don't believe he mentioned his wife in some way. However, I would like to point out that I believe that those two would be part of who Dreads came in, in this trilogy in the future and who he becomes. I love a good guy in this film, even though he didn't really do much other than be by Rocket's side, which is understandable and absolutely important to come on. The way he flew was actually really nice. Him having blasters, including Peter's blasters, was really sick and brilliant. Having him, having that inside of him, Solo killed the dude who had a tool that could save Rocket. And he drew that little picture of the dude, which is really funny. <laughs> and I'm glad he was able to grab the device so he could save Rocket in time. We learned who Rocket wanted to be and seen him young. And look at the rocket fly from this and this is really lovely to the point where he chose to calm himself rocket alongside his friends when he was young. They had us thought he was it was probably it for rocket here. He was touching to see Gamora see Peter and good hugging rocket. It made me feel like she saw love they have for each other and that was a nice the moment there. This film was visually stunning and when they were in space and nowhere and the uh, Kanye's ship was lovely and there's a new one. They don't have the Milano anymore and they don't have the other one they had in Endgame. Group being by Rocket side was lovely and when him and Solo were fighting the ship it grabbed my attention and the uh, fight style was, was impressive especially the hallway scene that was a blast. It was a really fun enjoyable experience especially when they saved Rocket. Everything about that was really enjoyable and satisfying the scene in the hallway took effort and then Gamora's fighting style was something I really admired. High visionary had children animals in cages and they went all out to make sure they were rescued, especially Rocket. High evolutionary was fighting Rocket and I thought all hope was lost when he was at defeating him. The team has back they like, destroyed like Peter Dreads, Good Nebula, Mantis and really came together and I really loved the individual characters we all know and love. Actually individually had the reasons to be who they are and they, when they came together to save you each other and they had each other's backs and it was really damn right I was extremely satisfied and amused I really love it they were willing to get a face off against the villain which was really outstanding and they took the children and animals to nowhere with Cosmo's help and Cosmo and the Canon were really cool and good saying I love you guys for business that we are also part of Guns of Galaxy as well which I admired how it was for them matters went off to find herself in the very end and then Gamora goes back to the Ravagers and Dreyer and Nebula are going to stay in nowhere to take care of the children and animals and reboot the headquarters from 
and I'm watching and actually Adam saved Star Lord from dying which is really such a relief but that also to be end for him. Peter ends up going home to Missouri to see his grandfather because within the film Mantis offered him some advice or I give him maybe the idea of him going back home and probably him being in counter probably reminded him of what home was on grew up in. So maybe that's why he was we tempted to go towards the end. Adam joins Rocket as a new member of the Guardians of Galaxy alongside Good Cosmo and Cracklin and Hive originally was experimenting on the children and one of them was Fala Bell who may be related to God Dr. Lawson or other words Miss Marvel. There was in Captain Marvel. Not much info was given by her character other than she was experimented on and met a Teresa intention. Character who joins Rocket and that many members of the audience. The backstory made me see Rocket in no way, which I felt really bad for him in this film, but it also towards the end I thought of four for his next adventures as the captain of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Going forward I will be honest and say I didn't really enjoy him much in the second Guardians film and in that game because I thought he didn't, I didn't really understand him that well. I didn't understand why he was being really hard on Peter and Yondu in the second film and him being there were alongside Thor in Endgame was okay until he took out his pain on Thor and slapped him and his actions with Thor shouldn't be. It's Cues at all. That being said, after watching this film, to me, I feel like he redeemed himself with when it comes to how he treated Quill in the second film. Their friendship is something that they had to work on together, and they had a lot of challenges along the way. And the way it, the way they were with each other, it was they were never supposed to be perfect friends. They ended up being friends because of the stuff they dealt with together and also individually and we end up seeing them care for one another and they learn from each other and they became their personal growth within their individual ways which is how and why their family bondage grew naturally and it's sad that Rocket's life was almost lost it came, came with a cause for them to become more closer and outside the other guardians as well in other words the better they had to experience possibly losing Rocket as well. It would be interesting for Adam and Rocket since being together in the team since Adam was the one who almost killed him. Groot is a really massive now and the legendary Star Lord will return for a movie. Right. It's such a wonderful movie, not perfect by any means, however, it does wrap up the tragedy. In a way, there was some way satisfying for the characters, and our Sam, he may disagree with certain things I said about the certain characters in the film, and that's alright. We see the same film in different ways, mostly superheroes, because that's what I mostly watch and talk about and share. I do care for these characters, I will stand by the stuff I say here. Please think about what I said in this review when it comes to um, the actions that the Guardians have done and thought about and the actions that the villain has done as well with, for example, the stuff of Counter Earth being destroyed James Gunn went back and forth with Disney and Marvel Studios due to the time he was being fired and he was brought back because they saw something within him and even the cast as well they really wanted to work on side him because he had a vision of in the trilogy and the projects that he's done and really worked out in their favor it was a way to learn from how James treats the Guardians of the Galaxy from which they are from the comments and the ideas and the visions aka how he chooses to present the film and I said Kevin and everyone else in yeah, Marvel Studios is a grand way of using his creativity and for when it comes to him writing and writing he uses that to his possibilities and his skills in this project really shows his future in his career especially that he was going to move to DC Studios. I'm interested in being a writer myself and it's important to grab your ideas and into paper to ignite your creativity which is very difficult to do so I'll give him props on that. When it comes to the MCU he did the best he could to show true emotion and art within his project here. Thank you so much for watching. I, if you believe I missed out on something, please reach down below in the comments. I'll be happy to talk to you about this film. I really appreciate it so much for watching. I have other views down below in the playlist. I'm also going to be reacting to MCU content real soon. Mostly I'm dressed up with Miss Marvel because I haven't reviewed that. 
to yeah. be a look out for that and uh, I also have spoiler territory if you want to see how I feel about certain DC comment projects I also talk about DC comments in my podcast spoiler territory if you want to check that out thank you so much for watching if you believe I missed out on something please reach out down below and I'll be happy to discuss the review about this film or review I really appreciate your time take care bye